What's up everybody, welcome to Adorama XP, I'm Josh Soleil. Graphics cards are back in stock at Adorama, and these have been the hardest PC parts to find in the past couple years. Well, with so many options to choose from, we thought we'd give you a video on how to choose the best graphics card for you. Let's check it out. Nvidia released their RTX series in 2020, and since then they've been some of the most powerful graphics cards in the market. Games are now built with ray tracing in mind, and in order to completely immerse yourself in all the new features, you'll want to get an RTX. So let's start with the basics and talk about what all these numbers and words mean. What is RTX? RTX stands for Ray Tracing Texel Extreme. RTX cards are specially designed to support real-time ray tracing. What is ray tracing? Ray tracing has been on everyone's mind ever since NVIDIA announced their RTX series. Ray tracing creates lifelike lights and shadows. It takes a high amount of power to use ray tracing, which is why you tend to see it utilized on higher end graphics cards more. Now when ray tracing is on, you'll see shadows and light reflected on objects in game. And it's absolutely remarkable. One game that utilizes it so well is Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and you can see it right here. There is Miles' reflection off of the building. You can see the entire skyline and the character you're playing as. Now, what is GDDR6 memory? GDDR6 memory is what helps run the files in your game. The higher the memory, the more computing power your GPU has. And if you plan on running a higher-end graphical game like, let's say, Cyberpunk 2077 or Control, you'll at least want to have 6 gigabytes of memory. And how you know that is games will always have a minimum and recommended specs. So if you're unsure what memory you want to get, check the games you love to play and see what memory they recommend. And it's always great to be future-proof and plan ahead for games coming out in the future. Now let's talk about cores. Cores allow for running large calculations at the same time much like cores in a computer processor. Imagine cores are line cooks, and the more you have, the more food you can cook. Well, the more cores you have, the faster your GPU will be. Now, when it comes to speed, clock speed is the indicator of how fast your cores operate. Now, sticking with the line cook analogy, even though you may have multiple line cooks, if they move slow, then it doesn't really help you. So you want your clock speed to be high so your cores can get things done. Now let's talk about tensor cores. They were developed specifically by NVIDIA, and it's a matrix multiplier. Essentially what that means is the user will see a huge speed in performance with tensor cores versus CUDA cores and other cores. The main overall advantage the user sees from using tensor core is a very large speed up in, in performance. Predominantly, tensor core is used in deep learning. There are other people looking at it for things like molecular dynamics. You get such a massive speed gain from using tensor cores that you can compute things that used to take you days, you can now do it in a day. Now let's talk about DLSS. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. It increases graphics performance using the tensor core processors in the new RTX graphics cards. It will boost frame rates and give you a sharper image. Now overall, DLSS is an incredible huge leap in graphics. However, some games may not optimize, update, or support DLSS, which could create a negative effect. DLSS is still new, and as it gets perfected, we'll see some revolutionary things. Now, what does TI stand for? Sometimes you see graphics cards like a 3080 versus a 3080 TI. Well, the TI stands for titanium, and this is the upgraded model from their base model. So a 3080 TI will be way more powerful than a 3080. Now, when it comes to power supplies, this is incredibly important. When RTX were first made available, people forgot to upgrade their power supplies, thinking they can use the same wattage from their previous GTX series to their RTX series. Well, RTX GPUs need a much higher power supply than previous models, and here's a breakdown of which supply you would need. Nvidia also announced in 2020 was Nvidia Broadcast, which allows you to turn any room into a home studio. It will connect to your webcam via your graphics card and it'll allow your webcam to auto frame. You'll get virtual background effects. It's great for streaming and also follow you, which is really cool. So if you don't necessarily have a good webcam software, Nvidia has their own, which you can download. So it's an added bonus if you're using an Nvidia graphics card that will enhance your overall streaming and webcam capabilities.
Well, let's start with our GeForce RTX 2060, a great introduction into the RTX line that's not gonna break your wallet. Now it has 1920 CUDA cores right there, boost clock of 1680, memory speed of 14 gigabits, and six gigabytes of GDR, GDDR6 memory inside right there. Now you have the ray tracing, you have the DLSS support, the GeForce experience, all of that that comes with that RTX line. So this is a great introduction into that RTX series that you have, into that 20 series. Uh, now, one thing I do wanna mention is the power supply only needs about 500 watts, more or less, you're probably already rocking that, uh, depending on the computer that you have. Now, one website that I love to check out is Game dash debate.com because this is going to let you know all of the games that this graphics card can run on so here you have the geforce rtx 2060 6 gigs if you plan on going higher than 1080 so if you plan on doing 1440 or 4k i would say don't even bother with the 2060 you're going to need something a lot more powerful to run that 1440 and to run in 4k so this is in 1080p now this is where the type of game you want to play is going to determine what graphics cards you get so if you plan on running Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're only gonna be running this at 20.9 frames per second, which is not good at all. But games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Marvel's Avengers, Borderlands 3, Control, Death Stranding, Grand Theft Auto V, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, games that came out in the past maybe like two or three years, you'll be able to play this wonderfully. As you see, they're all in green. Gears 5, Hitman 2, Far Cry New Dawn, Forza Horizon 4, Far Cry 5, Witcher 3. You're getting about 99 to 100 frames per second, 100 frames per second in Witcher 3, running at 1080p. Doom Eternal, Battlefield, and there's so many more games. And you can kind of get a breakdown of like, okay, am I playing the games that came out in the past I don't know, three, four years? Or do I want to get a game, uh, get a graphics card that's gonna be able to handle 1440 or 4K or something that might be coming out in the next two or three years? Because again, if you get a game that, let's say, Forspoken, if it comes out on PC, you might have some trouble running a 2060 on there depending on your graphics. Maybe you want it on low, maybe you want it on medium. So now let's check out the 30 series line, the RTX 3060. We're gonna talk about two different graphics cards here, the 3060 Ti, which is gonna be the titanium, which is gonna be more powerful, and the 3060 base model. CUDA cores is 4864 for that 3060 Ti and 3584 for the 360. Boost clocks, 1.67 for the Ti and 1.78 for the 360. Now, one is eight gigabytes of GDDR6, which is the TI, and one is 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. So that's where it's like, okay, well, there's more you know, memory in the 3060. However, the 3060 TI will be able to run it faster because there's, there's more speed to it, if that makes sense. Now you have everything that it comes with, ray tracing, tensor cores, uh, NVIDIA architecture, Ampere, everything like that, DLSS. Now here we go, we talk about the power supply again you are going to need a 600 power supply watts for the TI and a 550 power supply for the 360. So now let's check out the frames per second. This is the 360 right here, running at 1080p. You're gonna be able to run beautiful games on a 3060 at 1080p easily. And you can see Valhalla, which just came out recently, 67.2, Metro Exodus. But now we get into the 1440 games, and this is kind of on that fence where Metro Exodus goes to 51.5, Red Dead Redemption goes down to 55.9, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Hitman 3, you'll have a good 70 to 80. Now, if you get to 4K, which I would not recommend, you'll go down to the lower 30s or high 20s, depending on the game you play. Again, 3060 is not gonna be for that 4K gaming. You're gonna wanna go a little bit higher, which we'll get into. Now, the 3060 Ti, this is going to boost it most likely past 1440 for you because of that Ti edition. Now, 1080p blows it out of the water. Now, 1440, depending on the game you play, Cyberpunk's at a 50, Exodus 55, Control 57, Horizon Zero Dawn, 67, Shadow of Tomb Raider, 83, Hitman 3, 94. Now let's see how it does in 4K. Again, you're, instead of being in the 20s, you're now in the low to high 30s with Red Dead Redemption 2 at 38. Would not recommend 3060 Ti in 4K. I would say absolutely 1080p, and if you plan on rocking 1080p for the next five years, that 3060 Ti and 3060 is gonna be amazing. If you plan on upgrading to a 1440, you may see some lag in your frames. You might see some dropping, especially with the new games that are coming out. But again, if you wanna keep playing those games that have come out in the past five years, maybe you have a big Rolodex, that 3060 will be great. You have the 3070 Ti and the 3070. This is where 
they get pretty wild until we get to the 3080. You're gonna see a huge increase right here. 61.44 in CUDA cores for 37 Ti, 5,888 for 3070, clock speeds 177 Ti, 173 3070, both rocking eight gigabytes of that GDDR6X now for Ti and non-X for 3080, or for 3070. Uh, so everything has second generation ray tracing, third generation tensor cores, Ampere technology, and then you want to check out your power supply, 750 for the 37Ti and 650 for that 3070. Now let's check out the graphics. 3070 right here, easily knocks everything out of the park in 1080. 1440, you're going to have, it's going to be amazing. If you're running 1440, if you're trying to run 2K, a 3070, you probably want at least a 3070, if not higher. Valhalla, 62. Total War, 72. Control, 73.8. And now we're getting into the, this is the nitty gritty, right? We're getting into the frames per second. What gamers tend to look for when it comes to graphics cards. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a graphics card and just go, well, I hope this is going to work with my setup. Or I hope this is going to be good for my game. Witcher 3, 118. Woo, Hitman 3, 111. Now let's check it out in 4K. You have some yellow, but you do have some green right here. So Cyberpunk 2077, which was a huge game, 32.8 frames per second in 4K. Tough choice. Again, I wouldn't recommend a 3080. I'm oh, sorry, I wouldn't recommend a 3070 in 4K because there's 3080s and 3090s that you can do that's going to elongate your life. Uh, Shadow of Tomb Raider, 40. Valhalla, 42. Red Dead Redemption 2, 48. But Witcher 3, you're getting a 95.3. So depending on what games you want to get, maybe you're getting a computer for your kid and, you, and they're lucky enough to get a 3070 and you're building a computer for them and they want to, you want to play the Rolodex of, of, of games that have been incredible. You'll be able to play Witcher 3 on incredibly high settings in 4K with a 3070. Now there's a 3080 Ti and a 3080. This is one of the most powerful graphics cards out there now. There is 3090s and there are the rumored 40 series which is coming out, who knows when. So there are, of course, bigger graphics cards out there, but the 3080 was and is a beaut. All right, 10,240 CUDA cores for 3080 Ti. And depending on what 3080 you get, could be anywhere from 8,900 to 8,700. 1.67 boost clock, 171 boost clock for 3080, 12 gigabytes of memory for that 3080 Ti, 12. 12 gigabytes or a 10 gigabyte series for the 3080, depending on which one you get to. All the latest with the RTX, you get everything included. And now we check the power supply, 750 for that Ti and 750 for that non-Ti. So let's check out some frames. All right, 1080p, not even a question when I'm gonna bother with it. You're gonna be plenty with 1080p. 1440, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, 75.4 frames per second with a 3080. You're getting tons. As, the, as, as you go down the list, you're just seeing an increase. Witcher 3, 136.1. Now let's check it in 4K. That's where you get a little bit in the yellow, but still you're fine. 40 frames per second on Cyberpunk 2077, Valhalla 49, Shadow Tomb Raider 55, Red Dead Redemption 2 58. Now again, it also depends what processor you match this up with as well and what kind of cooling you have. But 3080, you're you're in it for the next, I wanna say three to four years, depending on how much they can, you know, how, how, what kind of games are coming out. Unreal Engine 5 just got released. Now the 3080 Ti, 1440. Cyberpunk 27 at 2077 at 78.5, Total War at 107, Monster Hunter at 111, 4K Cyberpunk goes up to 45.2, Monster Hunter 61, Final Fantasy 15 78, The Witcher 3 110 probably can go past that. So if you're looking a game in 4K, the 3080 Ti is going to be something for you definitely. And that's where there's so many different graphics cards out there. You know, you can go the 2060 RTX, which is an introduction, 3060 introduction to your 30 series if you plan on gaming into 1080p, and then with some awesome ray tracing and some DLSS support. Then if you want to get into higher, maybe 1440, you're looking at a 3070. But then if you want to get into 4K gaming, 3080, 3090. And that's where it goes up from there. So you definitely want to have a monitor that supports 4K. You definitely want to have a cooling system in the power supply that supports the processor and the GPU that you have. Building computers are wild and it could get crazy and it, sometimes it can get overwhelming. But that's why we're here to help. 
So check those out. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments which graphics cards you're rocking or which one you plan on getting. Check out our Twitch link in the bio down there to see all of our awesome gaming and music and photography content. Don't forget to join the Discord to join our community to talk all things gaming and more. And don't forget, adorama.com slash gaming for those awesome graphics cards. We'll see you soon. Thank you.